Howdy folks, Kiwi here, and welcome back to Steins Gate, a safe space in which we be awesome, where I'm a little low energy today, so, uh, <laughs> probably not going to do as much yelling as I normally do. So, let's see here. Should have gone back to her hotel and cried into a pillow instead of coming here to make excuses. Anyway, I wasn't crying, understand? End Sniff. Oh, that's her actually sniffling. See, it was in the quotation, so I was confused. Uh, let's see here. I can't go back far enough to know. I forgot why she was crying. Or that she wasn't. That sniffle tanked any credibility she might have had. Even now, instead of going back to her hotel, she plops onto the sofa and hugs my Yuri's Upa push plushie to her chest like a little... Little gal. For the next few minutes, she just sits there, pouting and staring at the wall. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> if the TV were on, then we could have a little BGM background movement. That should be N. BGN, background noise, but I don't know what the M stands for. For some distraction, but unfortunately, painful silence prevails. Painful particulates prevail. The only sounds are the whirring of the desktop's hard drive and Karasu's occasional sniffle. Jeez, what an annoying assistant. Crying all the time, being useless, having emotions and shit. Nah, that ain't me. How are we supposed to get any science done like this? Christina. Christi Christina. Christina. Shut up. Don't talk to me. Your lips say don't, but your aura says please. I Do we have to have the talk about no meaning no? Now, this isn't the particular context for such a conversation, but no should always mean no regardless of context, unless you have like a stubborn child who doesn't really understand yet. Um... When they say no, they're just trying to get out of vegetables or something. Anyway, that aside, this line of logic can be applied to the situations that require the no means no mentality. And let me take a moment to say, first of all, no means no, we all know this, or we all should anyway. Um, yes means yes. Um, if you say the word yes, then you should mean it. Don't just say yes and then actually mean no that is your fault for being for giving misinformation um now i know you like maybe the situation is stressful but don't exasperate it by lying if you mean no then you should say no and if you say yes then you should mean yes by contrast uh any vagueness means that there was misinformation and there wasn't clearly communicated as a person with autism i don't do well with nonverbal cues. Uh, it's in fact one of the things I do the worst on. So, if you're being flirty with me, and you want, and hypothetically you would want such a situation, I won't be able to tell. You have to be straight up, say, hey, let's sleep together, or something with a little more tact, but you know what I mean. That way I understand, oh, that's what you mean. Similarly, if you mean no, then say no. Say what you mean regardless of context. Always say what you mean. You know, maybe there's a little less tact, so you try and do it tactfully. You say, hey, can we talk privately for a second? I have something important to say. I don't know how you'll take it. You know, you preface so that people understand that what you're trying to say is important and that they should listen to you so, you know, there isn't miscommunication. But a lot of people, and by a lot, I mean almost everyone, is really bad at communicating what they're thinking almost everyone and i do this by and i counteract this by overly explaining everything that's going on i somebody says do this this and this i'll be like okay done but also and then i add in an additional information but the answer is always first front and center i say yes or i say no immediately and i say uh, well the answer to that is no but or the answer to that is yes although or something along those lines I always make it clear that the person ta I'm talking to understands what I'm thinking. And 
even that fails because a lot of the time I'm just bad at communicating. Um, now, this has gotten me in trouble, unfortunately, where people get angry that I've explained something or that I've talked about something or something. I don't know. I explained it wrong or I was supposed to talk, but I didn't have anything to say. So I got yelled at for ignoring the person and that's not... There's a lot of subtleties I don't understand and it should be easier to speak to people. <laughs> we invented conversation and communication via language. We should be able to be good at it. But we suck. Everyone sucks at it. <sighs> uh, but that's my rant for today. Maybe she's begging for attention. Yeah, see, stuff like this. She just clearly said don't. Don't talk to me. Shut up. I don't want to talk about it. Now, I don't know what she actually wants, but those are the words she chose. Meaning, you respect the words she chose. Because if she meant anything else, well, she'll come to regret what she actually said and learn from her mistake. Listen, you don't have to talk. Just listen. If there's something troubling you, I'll do everything in my power to help. Eh? Yeah. Kirsu looks at me blankly. And it's not just me. I'm sure I speak for Mayuri and Derek as well. So don't hesitate to come to us. I mean, you want to cry, don't hold it in. Just let it out. We won't reject you. We'll hear you out. Now, <laughs> if I were in such a situation and I were saying these words out loud, two, one of two things could happen. Either A, she accepts it and says, okay, I'm sorry, and, or, well, she said nothing. I guess three options. She says nothing. Or, um, the final answer, which is the most likely, uh, you misread the, the, uh, situation and she gets pissed at you for saying all these words that mean nothing. No. Why? Because you're important to us. You're our friend. Uh, yeah. For some reason, Karasu blushes and hangs her head. She hugs Upa so hard his face caves in and he explodes. I'm sorry, I was a little upset. Yeah, in such situations like this, social situations where you ha are required to do a thing, it is literally hit or miss if you'll succeed or not. It doesn't matter what you do, you will have failed. That's, that is my philosophy, that is my experience. Doesn't matter what I try, I will not succeed. I will read it wrong, or somebody will be spiteful and say that I read it wrong, or something. You don't have to tell me you don't want, if you don't want it. Just tell me when you're ready. I'll hear you out. Okay. She nods off. Looks like my sincerity has reached her. Looks like my unwarranted advice was something she didn't actually care about receiving. Unlike a lot of people in real life. <laughs> Just as planned. Show a friendless, experiment-loving girl just a little kindness, and she'll easily grant you her favor. How do I know that? Because I, too, have few friends. Mwah! <laughs> I'm a loner too. Nobody likes me. Ha ha ha, I win. <laughs> oh, oh, Kabe, you are, you are a riot. Here's your help is critical to solving the mystery of the phone wave and any subject to change. Now that my plan has succeeded, her petty private matters shall no longer be an, be an impediment to our science. I thought it said important. I'm like, something is wrong with this sentence. Normally I, the great Ein Kaim, would not concern myself with the mental health of my minions. But if this were but if this is the price I must pay to bring my dream to fruition, so be it. With this, Karasu's loyalty is assured. Soon the world will tremble before us. Alright. I spent the next morning doing laundry at the nearby laundromat when I returned to the lab just past noon. Daru, Mayuri, and Karasu were all assembled. Oh, pff. Ferris. I told you it's too late now. 
Too late. What are you talking about? You haven't told me anything. <laughs> there you go. That's that's how that goes. What was the last thing I did with with Ferris? The answer is nothing. I thought I had, but nope. Yeah, I read that one already. Thanks for coming on a Saturday. Your devotion to science makes me proud. It swells my heart with pride and stuff. Yeah. You're exercised deeply. It's the middle of summer, but instead of going on vacation, I'm stuck in the sauna with a bunch of pervs. Where did I go wrong? She's really giving us a verbal beatdown in her not really passionate and just sort of indifferent voice, that of hers. Wipe your tears, you experiment loving girl without a single friend. Fucking excuse me. What? <laughs> I'm not crying. Even if she was, like, what the fuck kind of sentence is that? You stupid bastard. Like, that's not a thing you say to friends. Besides, you're the one who told us to be here. Indeed, but the one who obeyed my orders and arrived on time was you. What? <laughs> you obey. You followed my instructions. This is your fault. You know, Chris Chan is actually a very honest and hardworking girl. That's what Mayushi thinks. She smiles as she eats some nuggets from McD's. <laughs> oh, yo, McD's. A fast food hamburger chain boasting top market share based in America. Uh, you know, that sounds about right. I'm not sure if that's actually, like, the, the real-life counterpart does boasting top market share. I'm going to go with likely. I thought I was going to say, like, boasting food. And I'm like, nah, that ain't, that ain't me. Nope, wrong. That's what makes her so adorable. <laughs> Stop complimenting me. I can't take it. How can this girl say something like that while eating a nugget? Um, because people are able to do that. You freaking not human understanding person. Don't let it bother you. That's just Mayuri's nature. I've been with her a long time, so I'm used to her just eating McDon McDee's constantly. She has never in her life eaten literally anything else ever. I'm surprised she's still alive. Did you, didn't you see the Super Size Me movie documentary? They based it off of her, and she's way healthier than them. Yuri <laughs> flag, Yuri flag. I get it. Yuri flag. A metafiction term refers to common methods of foreshadowing particular events. A death flag, for example, suggests that a character will die shortly. Well, no, that's just at that event, not shortly. Death flags and romance flags are the most frequent. So, what I'm hearing, Deru, is that you think that they'll have sex. That's what I'm hearing. <laughs> Please unget it. <laughs> now, that's a sentence I can get behind. Hi. Yeah, Christian, have a nagi. Uh, uh, thanks. Uh, do you have any that aren't shaped like the boot one? I I, I prefer the other shapes. Oh, pfft, looking down. Well, listening to their heartwarming banter, I go to put my laundry on the table. However, mm, is Kersu wearing <laughs> shorts or pants? <laughs> Don't put that there. It's filthy. The laundry or the I just washed them. Like, I don't care. What kind of guy puts his underwear in a girl's face? Have some decency. Your face is all the way over there. <laughs> the underwear is here. In the laundry basket. Not over there. The underwear is here. In the laundry basket. Nowhere near your face. Calm the fuck down. <laughs> You're that interested in my underwear, then just say so. What? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not interested at all. Come on, guys. No more talking about underwear. I didn't read the rest. Damn it. Mayushi's trying to eat here, okay? 
How can you say that when you're still shoveling nuggets in your mouth? Well, um, see, if it's a que- if you're asking a question of logistics, then I don't know. That, that's pretty impressive. If you're asking like how socially she can do that, like why would you do that more than uh, because she wants to? <laughs> don't interrupt me. I end up putting my laundry in the changing room. Hmm. As I explained to Derry yesterday, I noticed something about the results of our experiment. D-mails have too many uncertain variables. We can never be sure what will happen when we send one. It's not like we can do anything about that. After all, the result is up to whoever receives the mail. Of course, if you can analyze the recipient's psychology, then you might be able to manipulate them into doing what you want. There might be a bit too much for how you're underwear Sure. You just wanted to say underwear, didn't you? Under there. Underwear aside, the fact is that the email is still far from complete. I need a more reliable time machine before I can expose CERN and the organization and plunge the world into chaos. And that, ladies and gentlemen, and, and Daru, is why I called you here today. The purpose of today's roundtable conference is... I, I particularly like this view. Another roundtable? Not a roundtable conference that much. I think still buy a roundtable. <laughs> Remember what Okreen said, Christian? The round table is in our hearts. See, she's not even close to stupid. She remembers all the weird nonsense. Does that book by the TV say Nitro on it? For sure it does. Mary san, you're innocent, but you shouldn't take everything Okabe says seriously. It's all an act. 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 She's not stupid. She's not innocent. All of it is foreshadowing to the fact that she's smarter than everyone here. <sighs> really? Round table doesn't matter now. More importantly, the purpose of today's meeting is to explore methods of true physical time travel, not just D-mail, but the objective of sending someone to the past like CERN has. Don't be ridiculous. That was fast. And she's glaring at me even harder than she was during the whole underwear thing. Well, she's got a smirking grin. Since she has the best equipment in the world, even after nine years, they still haven't succeeded. We can't possibly hope to accomplish something like that. It'll become a gel, Okarine. <laughs> I'm talking about my friend dying. Kinda sounds like Garo Froggy. Why did those things get popular anyway? I don't know why you're bringing it up, asshole. A fictional, a fictional series of plush straps featuring ugly yet cute, ugly cute frog character N, which became a fad among high school girls in Shibuya one year ago. After the Shibuya earthquake, the series was canceled and their popularity faded rapidly. Yeah, that's the thing, right? Like, I've never been into the whole, like, ugly cute phenomenon. I don't understand it. Things that don't look good just don't look good. And I don't really consider things ugly or cute. They just are aesthetically pleasing or not. Laughing matter. Isn't it too early to give up? How did I succeed with D-mail? First in human history? Or not, that's first. Didn't CERN do it before us? Humanity's first time traveling email, for we who have achieved that miracle, nothing's impossible. Such baseless confidence. Anyway, wasn't it just a coincidence that we discovered D-mail? I still haven't figured out what's functioning as the lifter. The lifter. Oh, the, uh, okay. We just need to figure that out, don't we? It's futile. 
セルンですら解決できていない問題にはどう対処するか。Well, by not being defeatist for one thing. But that ought to be it for this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. I, of course, am Kiwi. You've been great too, and yourself, a delightful day. Goodbye!